I don't know if you can tell, there's uh, some roadworks going on on my street, so um, I might have to overdub this episode with some voiceover instead of what I normally do, is just talk through everything. You might also notice I'm wearing overalls, courtesy of the previous company that I worked for, which I've uh, covered up their name. Um, so thanks for that, guys. First thing I'm going to try and do today is get the spark plugs out. So I need to suck out and blow out all the rubbish and dirt and debris that's in those holes. So first things first, take out the HT leads. Now this guy needs to come out as well, which is the coil sparky generator thing. Squirt a little bit of WD, pull the terminals off, and then this releases. You don't need to take the nuts off all the way. He will just slide out of there and pull the HT leads out of the casing. Right, now here's the four HT leads. Now interestingly, you might notice that all four of the ends are different, which is a bit weird. Inside the plug hole, I squirted some penetrating fluid about a month ago. It's still there, which might suggest it hasn't penetrated it very well. Now good old Ryobi's coming into action now, and check out this, got a tiny little nozzle. Check out what I bought. A whole box! Oh, I think that's the end of the uh, HT lead. This didn't work as well as I thought it would, so I'm going to try a slightly different approach. I'm gonna try a slightly different approach! Oh. Now let's face it, not a single one of you thought these were going to clean up that well. Oh, there's a train going by. Look at that. I reckon these might actually come out. I was more worried about this one on cylinder four, uh, thinking that the hex had gone completely rusty, but it actually looks okay. For those of you that don't know, these are spark plug pullers. So they're normal sockets, uh, but inside they have a rubber seal in there so that you can pull the spike plug out so you tighten it on and then it basically the rubber seal grips onto the spike plug and it pulls it out you've got two different sizes generally we're gonna you be using the smaller one now it's really important that i was able to clean all the uh, debris out of these holes because if i take the spike plugs out and then all that debris falls into the cylinder holes then it's game over before we've even started Unfortunately, nothing is simple with this bike and neither of my spark plug puller socket thingies uh, fit either down the hole or around the spark plug. So I'm going to have to use a standard 18 mm uh, long socket, which is the size of the nut on this particular spark plug for this particular bike. Annoyingly, the diggers were running when I was explaining this at the time, which is why you've got a nice voiceover instead. I'm just going to take this opportunity to apologise again for the diggers and the roadworks. I will not be filming any more videos whilst they're doing whatever it is they're doing. Two out of two. If you're new to the channel and you uh, are wondering why the bike is in this sort of state, then check out my other videos and you'll be able to see everything that I've done so far. You've got to bear in mind this thing was in a barn for 28 years. It's a huge bumblebee. Oh, wow. Hey, little guy. <laughs> three out of three. This is exciting. Yeah, four out of four. Who would have thought? They came out really easily, which means they weren't too tight. Or the penetrating fluid did its job for the last month. I got distracted and now I'm trying to take the uh, rubber um, inlet hoses off because they're solid and there's no way I'm going to get the carbs back on with them in place. And I've had one defiant screw which I've had to put some more grips on the back of to unwind because it's so rusty, the head, um, I rounded it. <laughs> there you go keeping stuff in the holes so that I don't get stuff in the holes that I don't want in the holes. Right. Da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah. Doesn't look too bad. Well, it's very bad. <laughs> 
Here we have cylinder one, two, three, and four. And as you can see, they're all very similar. Um, equally minging. Now I'm just gonna put a bit of penetrating fluid down into the cylinder bores and then I'm gonna turn it over by hand by putting it into gear and turning the back wheel. Now there's no compression, that shouldn't be too difficult. Famous last words. Going first. It's pretty seized. <laughs> Obviously I have to watch back all these videos whilst I'm editing and I know now a lot more than I did whilst I was making this video. And knowing what I know now, I would suggest that it's actually the gearbox that seized and not the engine, which is a pity. Plan B, I'm going to put that uh, relay contactor back on and use the ignition switch to turn the engine over. Here we have the nice new relay contactor switch solenoid valve thing and he just goes on there Let's pop, pop the terminal things on first that might be easier might it so this is a relay contactor and in a previous video I removed it because it was completely broken it did nothing so 12 volts went to it but 12 volts did not come out of it and this sends the 12 volts directly from the battery to the starter motor when you press the ignition button I'm gonna drain the oil out and have a look at that okay. ready Okay. I'm not gonna lie, that is not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. That looks quite clean, to be honest. Is that pot big enough? Oh no. <laughs> I'd just like to mention at this point that there's actually two sump plugs on this bike. There's one towards the front of the bike and one towards the back. Glug, 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 glug. Looks like Guinness. No, it doesn't, mate. It's pretty clean. No, it isn't, mate. Just give that a wipe. Okay, I have a slight worry. You can't tell this on camera, but that oil smells a little bit like petrol. I'm under-exaggerating. It smells a lot like petrol. Just gonna pop the bolt back in. Uh, oh, I need to undo the front one as well, don't I? Now a common problem that would cause the death of these would be that the carburetors would flood the cylinders with petrol and in trying to make the um, cylinders go up and down the engine would just bend the, the con rods and yeah, right the engine off. Uh, I'm hoping that isn't what's happened here. I'll take the second sub plunk out. Sub plunk? <laughs> sump plug and then I'll take the filter out and we'll have a look at that see if there's any iron filings in there metal filings out of the iron do they any kind of metal so even though I'm fully prepared to completely strip this engine down and rebuild it with all the parts that it needs the whole purpose of this exercise in trying to get it to run is to see if I actually need to um, it would be nice not to have to need to take it apart but it's looking like I'm probably going to have to. Uh, in case you're wondering how I'm going to dispose of this, there is actually a garage at the end of my street who will be more than happy for me to put this in his oil disposal and then it will be disposed of responsibly. But I guess I could give it to McDonald's to cook their uh, chips in. For those of you that were concerned that there wasn't going to be any metal in there, um, wow, well, don't worry, there's plenty. Oh dear. Let's pop the filter off and have a look at that. I'm not expecting good things. <laughs> Let's have a look. As well, if there is chunks of metal in there, are, there aren't many of them. Oop. 
<laughs> so the new filter also comes with a new o-ring there's a small o-ring as well which i think maybe is a sump plug o-ring i don't know but if that was the case you'd think it would come with two right let's take the old one off which as you can see is very flat and actually damaged in a couple of places from where it's been over tightened or not seated correctly when tightened 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 so I've wiped this up, cleaned all the debris off, uh, cleaned the spring, there we go, new spring, well not new spring, sorry, new filter, and then that's going to go back on the bike. Obviously not forgetting to put the new o-ring in, Ashley, come on. Okay, I've just gone to put it back on the bike, and then I thought this was all one piece, but the bolt is actually separate, and there is that second o-ring. And everybody knows Ashley likes mashed potato. Hello, Mousy. I've just bitten into this donut and it's been doubly injected with jam. Thank you, Gregs. Okay, so can't make it any worse, so I'm gonna pop up, pop up, top up. I'm gonna put some oil in it <coughs> so it's ready to, for when we're ready to turn it over. Uno funnel Now obviously this is me being very optimistic based on the fact that we know we've got iron shavings in the engine and we know the oil smells of petrol. All I'm doing is here is adding some lubrication because I want to turn it over, I want to get it to start and just for fun now to be honest. <laughs> So I'm going to fill this up to halfway-ish, and then once it's running, redo it. That's what it says in the book anyway. So I've put the new relay contact on, I've changed the oil in the engine. Let's see if it turns over without the spark plugs plugged in and with the ignition key. Okay, battery hooked up. Let's see what happens. Now remember last time we tried this, this was faulty. Now I've put a brand new one on, so hopefully the engine should turn over with the button. Okay, here goes nothing. Nothing. <laughs> here goes literally nothing. Okay, what have I done wrong? Kill switch. Right, now let's try it. It might be that battery that's flat, but the pistons are moving up and down, which is good. Let's try and put some more power on this. I think this battery is probably, probably flat. I mean, all I wanted it to do was make the cylinders go up and down to make sure that it wasn't seized and to get them moving. I've put some uh, penetrating fluid in there to try and like lube them up a little bit. So the more they're moving, the better they are gonna be. Okay, this is a good thing. So after doing that, the oil has obviously pumped around the engine and now the dial, dial? The sight glass is reading zero, so I'm gonna put some more in. There we go, so I've topped it up, back to normal. The more this turns over, the better it starts. Oh, by the way, I sprayed some contact cleaner in here, so this now works perfectly. So the more this turns over, the better it sounds, not the better it starts. I reckon it will start. So what do we need to make the engine go bang bang? We need ignition, fuel, air, and compression. Now, I've bought a compression tester, so let's see if all four cylinders have the same, if not similar, compression. So this is very simple. It's just a pressure dial thing with various fittings and fixtures to attach to the cylinder. So these go in where the spark plug goes in. Okay, so with the correct adapter fitted, I fitted it to cylinder one. Let's turn the ignition on and see what happens. We have uh, six and a bit red compression. Let's see what the other cylinders do. Okay, cylinder two. Ooh, a bit more 
torque compression on cylinder two. Nine and a bit red. Cylinder three. <laughs> Just under nine, well, pretty much bang on nine red. And finally, cylinder four. Whoa. Not much there at all on four. Barely three red. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not holding out much hope for these <laughs> with being covered in tape and completely different connectors on them. Now the way we check for spark is we leave the HT lead out, put a spark plug in it, touch it against the chassis of the bike which is ground and turn the ignition on and see if we get a spark. And you'll see it between the uh, end of the spark plug and the bit inside the spark plug. <laughs> I actually don't believe that because that's the HT lead that fell out. I've just pushed it back in. Let's see if there's spark on the other on the other leads. <laughs> there is spark on all four. Given the fact that I've got spark on all four leads, I've actually put the spark plugs, the new spark plugs, in the engine, and I've connected up the HT leads, put the coil packs back on there. Now I need to put the carburetors back on. Because what else do we need, people? Fuel. We need fuel, air, spark, compression. Now the fuel and the air come from the carburettors. I'm going to order some new ones of these, but I've cleaned these up for the purposes of trying to get the bike running today. Uh, they don't look too bad, to be honest. They're just a bit. They're just a bit hard, so they might not go on very easily. So they are actually slightly angled. And I think, I didn't notice this when I took them off, but I think they probably want to angle it so that the carbs are more, uh, level, <laughs> is the word I'm looking for. So let's, let's put them on. Here are the carbs. Ah, right. So taking advice from the comments, it's easier to connect the uh, throttle cable with it not attached to the bike. So let's do that. I'm also gonna to need to blank off this vacuum hose. This is gonna be one of these things that's just gonna be fiddly regardless, isn't it? Okay, so you have to open the throttle up and get that in there like that, come on. In you go. And that bit goes in there. And then that bit, yes, done. <laughs> that was tricky. Now, obviously, because I've routed the throttle cable the wrong way, the carbs don't fit inside there. So you're going to have to thread the throttle cable through there and then awkwardly try and do it. Ash's top tip of the day put these on the carbs before you push it onto the engine. Much easier. And also, this little notch here depicts the top. Yeah? Cool, now you know. Right, after much wrestling, I've got the carbs back on. Uh, definitely put the, uh, the, uh, the what are they called, the, the tubes, the rubber, these things. Uh, put them on the carbs first and then push it onto the bike. I nearly pushed the bike off the stand trying to do it the other way. Mm. Oh, there's always something happening around here. Go away, van. I have forgotten to put the choke cable on, uh, but I think I can do that with it on the bike because it goes onto this bracket here. I've just remembered from disassembly, um, you have to take off the bracket from the carb body to get this to go back in here because it's not quite long enough. I don't know if you, it, that's supposed to be the case, but it's certainly my case. Okay, so we have ignition, compression, eh, air, we need some fuel. Hmm. Oh, hello. Oh, it's plenty in there. You can share some, can't you? Yes, you can. So we bought this. It's a little temporary fuel tank because, well, at the risk of uh, giving you a spoiler, 
I don't have the fuel tank. I have a camera assistant helping me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's uh, let's get some nice juicy fuel. Oh, <laughs> Rather you than me. Oh, look at it go! And I didn't get any in my mouth. Well done. How much fuel do we need? Mm hmm. That much? <coughs> you only need it to start. Yeah, but the carburetors need to fill up. Oh. Oh, it's not going to start, is it? I know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> this was a brilliant idea. Thanks, Thundercat. You're welcome. <laughs> Other people would have gone to the petrol station. <laughs> <laughs> Mini petrol tank. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Here's Kate. <laughs> so we have uh, a little mini fuel tank going down to the carburetors. Carburetors are on, so we'll have air and fuel. We've got spark. We've got compression, kind of. Um, let's. Let's see what happens. I am not expecting this to work. I don't even know why I'm going to try. Think happy thoughts. <laughs> oh, she's gone. There she is. <laughs> Think happy thoughts, she says. Okay, let's, let's, let's give it a go. Let's undo my fuel tap. I didn't hear any fuel clogging in. I guess I have to undo the lid. Else it's a vacuum, isn't it? You're a vacuum. Oh, it's clogging. It's not leaking. From what I can see. Ignition on. Now there's no fuel pump on this, I don't think. It's just gravity fed. Oh, there is something I've forgotten to do. There's a vacuum line that connects to the pet cop. I'm just gonna put the cable tie on it. Because, uh, well, obviously not supposed to be left open, is it? So I'm just gonna. Da, 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 da. I've got a bulldog clip. A <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Right, we ready? Let's pull the choke out. I think the battery might be flat. Let's get some more juice. Hit pause. So I've hooked it up to the Jag. Um, Let's try again. Ready? First start. 28, nearly 29 years. Choke out. Go. Whoa! That... Oh, fire! Where did that come from? The, near the red thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> near the jump lead. Jump the lead, red thing. Jump lead was touching chassis, apparently. Okay, let's try again. Ready? No, we have a bad connection somewhere. Oh, come on! Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh. oh my gosh, what is nice happening in there? Fire in cylinder three. It smells bad. It doesn't surprise me. That does not smell good. <laughs> Just It's a no. I was just about to shout for the fire extinguisher. Probably should have that on hand. Mm, I'll go get it. <laughs> what went out the back? <laughs> Something blew out of the exhaust by the looks of it. I think it came out the, uh, the throttle body. Something hit. The bike. Let's start the joke. <laughs> right, die.
Well, if you enjoyed watching me fail at this, um, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, wish me luck, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Do you know what this looks like, honey? What? An Ashley problem. <laughs> I believe in you, but you might need a little bit more time. Is that supposed to happen? <laughs> what we can do. Hold that thought. Holding the thought. It's this sexy half built motorbike. Could be yours for 99 99 99 Look how shiny the carburetors are, though, in comparison to everything else. Very shiny. All right, watch out. Watching. Standing back. Standing back. Oh my god! Oh! It's alive! <laughs> it's alive! <laughs> Oh, oh honey! And on that note, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> Woo! Oh yes, baby! Uh, easy start. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to start a motorbike, people. Baby, I think I'm... Uh... <laughs> Hello! Hi! I think that that is not meant to be on fire. I don't know a lot about motorbikes, but I do know that. <laughs> I'm choking. This could be in the bonus footage. <clears throat>